Chapter 4 Climate This chapter has 16 pages and is read by Sheba. Page 26 Chapter 4 Climate Friends, in the last two chapters, you have read about the landforms and the drainage of our country. These are the two of the three basic elements that one learns about the natural environment of any area. In this chapter, you will learn about the third, that is, the atmospheric conditions that prevail over our country. Why do we wear woolens in December? Or why it is hot and uncomfortable in the month of May? And why it rains in June and July? The answers to all these questions can be found out by studying about the climate of India. Climate refers to the sum total of weather conditions and variations over a large area for a long period of time. That is, more than 30 years. Weather refers to the state of atmosphere over an area at any point of time. The elements of weather and climate are the same, that is, temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind, humidity and precipitation. You may have observed that the weather conditions fluctuate very often even within a day. But there is some common pattern over a few weeks or months. That is, days are cool or hot, windy or calm, cloudy or bright, and wet or dry. On the basis of generalized monthly atmospheric conditions, the year is divided into seasons such as winter, summer or rainy seasons. The world is divided into a number of climatic regions. Do you know what type of climate India has and why is it so? We will learn about it in this chapter. Do you know, friends, the word monsoon is derived from the Arabic word mosim, which literally means season. Monsoon refers to the seasonal reversal in wind direction during a year. From the text. The climate of India is described as the monsoon type. In Asia, this type of climate is found mainly in the south and the southeast. Despite an overall unity in the general pattern, there are perceptible regional variations in climatic conditions within the country. Let us take two important elements, temperature and precipitation, and examine how they vary from place to place and season to season. In summer, the mercury occasionally touches 50 degrees centigrade in some parts of the Rajasthan desert, whereas it may be around 20 degrees centigrade in Pahalgam in Jammu and Kashmir. On a winter night, temperature at Dras in Jammu and Kashmir may be as low as minus 45 degrees centigrade. Tiruvanthapuram, on the other hand, may have the temperature of 22 degrees centigrade. From the box... Dear friends, do you know, in certain places, there is a wide difference between day and night temperatures. In the Thar Desert, the day temperature may rise to 50 degrees centigrade and drop down to near 15 degrees centigrade the same night. On the other hand, there is hardly any difference in day and night temperatures in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands or in Kerala. From the text. Let us now look at precipitation. There are variations not only in the form and types of precipitation, but also in its amount and the seasonal distribution. While precipitation is mostly in the form of snowfall in the upper parts of Himalayas, it rains over the rest of the country. The annual precipitation varies over 400 cm in Meghalaya to less than 10 cm in Ladakh and western Rajasthan. Most parts of the country receive rainfall from June to September. But some parts, like Tamil Nadu coast, gets a large portion of its rain during October and November. Page 27 In general, coastal areas experience less contrasts in temperature conditions. Seasonal contrasts are more in the interior of the country. There is decrease in rainfall generally from east 
to west in the northern plains these variations have given rise to variety in lives of people in terms of food they eat the clothes they wear and also the kind of houses they live in from the box why the houses in rajasthan have thick walls and flat roofs why is it that the houses in the tarai region and in goa and mangalore have sloping roofs why houses in assam are built on stilts climatic controls there are six major controls of the climate of any place they are latitude altitude pressure and wind system distance from the sea continentality ocean currents and relief features due to the curvature of the earth the amount of solar energy received varies according to latitude as a result air temperature generally decreases from the equator towards the poles as one goes from the surface of the earth to higher altitudes the atmosphere becomes less dense and temperature decreases the hills are therefore cooler during summers the pressure and wind system of any area depend on the latitude and altitude of the place thus it influences the temperature and rainfall pattern the sea exerts a moderating influence on climate as the distance from the sea increases its moderating influence decreases and the people experience extreme weather conditions this condition is known as continentality that is very hot during summers and very cold during winters ocean currents along with onshore winds affect the climate of the coastal areas for example any coastal area with warm or cold currents flowing past it will be warmed or cooled if the winds are onshore find out friends why most of the world's deserts are located in the western margins of the continents in the subtropics from the text finally relief too plays a major role in determining the climate of a place high mountains act as a barrier for cold or hot winds they may also cause precipitation if they are high enough and lie in the path of rain bearing winds the leeward side of mountains remains relatively dry factors affecting india's climate latitude The Tropic of Cancer passes through the middle of the country from the Rana of Kutch in the west to Mizoram in the east. Almost half of the country lying south of the Tropic of Cancer belongs to the tropical area. All the remaining areas north of the tropic lies in the subtropics. Therefore, India's climate has characteristics of tropical as well as subtropical climates. Altitude India has mountains to the north which have an average height of about 6000 meters. India also has a vast coastal area where the maximum elevation is about 30 meters. The Himalayas prevent the cold winds from central asia from entering the subcontinent. It is because of these mountains that the subcontinent experiences comparatively milder winters as compared to central asia. pressure and winds the climate and associated weather conditions in india are governed by the following atmospheric conditions pressure and surface winds upper air circulation and western cyclonic disturbances and tropical cyclones india lies in the region of northeasterly winds these winds originate from the subtropical high pressure belt of the northern hemisphere page 28 they blow south get deflected to the right due to the coriolis force and move on towards the equatorial low pressure area generally these winds carry very little moisture as they originate and blow over land therefore they bring little or no rain hence india should have been an arid land but it is not so let us see why 
From the box, we have a definition given of the Coriolis force. It is an apparent force caused by the Earth's rotation. The Coriolis force is responsible for deflecting winds towards the right in the northern hemisphere and towards the left in the southern hemisphere. This is also known as Ferrell's law. From the text, dear friends, the pressure and wind conditions over India are unique. During winter, there is a high-pressure area north of the Himalayas. Cold, dry winds blow from this region to the low-pressure areas over the oceans to the south. In summer, in summer, a low-pressure area develops over interior Asia as well as over northwestern India. This causes a complete reversal of the direction of winds during summer. Air moves from the high-pressure area over the southern Indian Ocean in a southeasterly direction, crosses the equator and turns right towards the low-pressure areas of the Indian subcontinent. These are known as southwest monsoon winds. These winds blow over the warm oceans, gather moisture and bring widespread rainfall over the mainland of India. The upper air circulation in this region is dominated by a westerly flow. An important component of this flow is the jet stream. These jet streams are located approximately over 27 degree to 30 degree north latitude. Therefore, they are known as subtropical westerly jet streams. Over India, these jet streams blow south of the Himalayas all through the year except in summer. From the box, jet stream. These are a narrow belt of high altitude, that is, 12,000 meter westerly winds in the troposphere. Their speed varies about 110 km per hour in summer to about 184 km per hour in winter. A number of separate jet streams have been identified. The most constant are the mid-latitude and the sub tropical jet stream. From the text, the western cyclonic disturbances experienced in the north and northwestern parts of the country are brought in by this westerly flow. In summer, the subtropical westerly jet stream moves north of the Himalayas with the apparent movement of the sun. An easterly jet stream called as subtropical easterly jet stream blows over peninsular India approximately over 14 degree north during the summer months. In the box given here is the definition for the western cyclonic disturbances. The western cyclonic disturbances are weather phenomena of the winter months brought in by the westerly flow from the Mediterranean region. They usually influence the weather of the north and northwestern region of India. Tropical cyclones occur during the monsoons as well as in October-November and are part of the easterly flow. These disturbances affect the coastal regions of the country. Have you read or heard about the disasters caused by them on Orissa and Andhra Pradesh coast? From the text the Indian monsoon. The climate of India is strongly influenced by monsoon winds. The sailors who came to India in historic times were one of the first to have noticed the phenomenon of the monsoon. They benefited from the reversal of the wind system as they came by sailing ships by the mercy of winds. The Arabs, who had also come to India as traders, named this seasonal reversal of the wind system monsoon. Figure 4.1 A picture showing the arrival of monsoon. Page 29 Given here are two maps which shows the atmospheric conditions over the Indian subcontinent of the month of January and in the month of June. Figure 4.2 It shows the winds are blowing from land to sea 
that is, from the Indian subcontinent towards the Arabian Sea and also parts of Bay of Bengal, which brings drier effect over the subcontinent of India. Also, in figure 4.3, it shows the southwest monsoon, which shows the rain-bearing winds coming from the Arabian Sea towards the Indian subcontinent. It also shows the subtropical westerly jet stream. Page 30 The monsoons are experienced in the tropical area, roughly between 20 degree north and 20 degree south. To understand the mechanism of monsoons, the following facts are important. A. The differential heating and cooling of land and water creates low pressure on the land mass of India, while the seas around experience comparatively high pressure. B. The shift of the position of intertropical convergence zone, that is known as ITCZ in summer, over the Ganga plain, that is, this is the equatorial trough normally positioned about 5 degrees north of the equator. It is also known as the monsoon trough during the monsoon season. C. The presence of the high pressure area east of Madagascar, approximately at 20 degrees south over the Indian Ocean. The intensity and position of this high pressure area affects the Indian monsoon. D. The Tibetan Plateau gets intensely heated during summer, which results in strong vertical air currents and the formation of low pressure over the plateau at about 9 km above sea level. E. The movement of the westerly jet stream to the north of the Himalayas and the presence of the tropical easterly jet stream over the Indian Peninsula during summer. From the box. Intertropical Convergence Zone Intertropical Convergence Zone, that is ITCZ, is a broad trough of low pressure in equatorial latitudes. This is where the northeast and the southeast trade winds converge. This convergence zone lies more or less parallel to the equator but moves north or south with the apparent movement of the sun. From the text, Apart from this, it has also been noticed that changes in the pressure conditions over the southern oceans also affect the monsoons. Normally, when the tropical eastern South Pacific Ocean experiences high pressure, the tropical eastern Indian Ocean experiences low pressure. But in certain years, there is a reversal in the pressure conditions and the eastern Pacific has lower pressure in comparison to the eastern Indian Ocean. This periodic change in pressure conditions is known as Southern Oscillation or SO. The difference is pressure over Tahiti, that is in Pacific Ocean, lies 8 degree south and 149 degree west and Darwin in northern Australia Indian Ocean 12 degree 30 minutes south and 131 degree east is computed to predict the intensity of the monsoons if the pressure differences were negative it would mean below average or late monsoon a feature connected with the SO is the El Nino phenomenon in which a warm ocean current that flows past the Peruvian coast in place of the cold Peruvian current every two to five years. The changes in the pressure conditions are connected to the El Nino. Hence, the phenomenon is referred to as ENSO, that is El Nino Southern Oscillation. From the box. El Nino, this is the name given to the periodic development of a warm ocean current along the coast of Peru as a temporary replacement of the cold Peruvian current. El Nino is a Spanish word meaning the child and refers to the baby Christ. As this current starts flowing during Christmas, 
the presence of the El Nino leads to an increase in sea surface temperatures and weakening of the trade winds in the region. On the onset of the monsoon and withdrawal, the monsoon, unlike the trades, are not steady winds but are pulsating in nature, affecting by different atmospheric conditions encountered by it. On its way, Over the warm tropical seas, the duration of the monsoon is between 100 to 120 days from early June to mid-September. Around the time of its arrival, the normal rainfall increases suddenly and continues constantly for several days. This is known as the burst of the monsoon and can be distinguished from the pre-monsoon showers. The monsoon arrives at the southern tip of the Indian Peninsula generally by the first week of June. Subsequently, it proceeds into two, the Arabian Sea branch and the Bay of Bengal branch. The Arabian Sea branch reaches Mumbai about 10 days later on approximately the 10th of June. This is fairly rapid advance. The Bay of Bengal branch also advances rapidly and arrives in Assam, in the first week of June. The lofty mountains causes the monsoon winds to deflect towards the west over the Ganga plains. By mid-June, the Arabian Sea branch of the monsoon arrives over Saurashtra, Kutch and the central part of the country. The Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal branches of the monsoon merge over the northwestern part of the Ganga plains. Delhi generally receives the monsoon showers from the Bay of Bengal branch by the end of June. Tentative date is 29th of June. By the first week of July, western Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana and eastern Rajasthan experience the monsoon. By mid-July, the monsoon reaches Himachal Pradesh and the rest of the country. It has already been explained in figure 4.3. Withdrawal or the retreat of the monsoon is a more gradual process, which has been depicted in figure 4.4. The withdrawal of the monsoon begins in northwestern states of India by early September. By mid-October, it withdraws completely from the northern half of the peninsula. The withdrawal from the southern half of the peninsula is fairly rapid. By early December, the monsoon has withdrawn from the rest of the country. The islands receive the very first monsoon showers progressively from south to north. From the last week of April to the last week of May, the withdrawal takes place progressively from north to south from the first week of December to the first week of January. By this time, the rest of the country is already under the influence of the winter monsoon. The Seasons The monsoon type of climate is characterized by a distinct seasonal pattern. The weather conditions greatly change from one season to the other. These changes are particularly noticeable in the interior parts of the country. The coastal areas do not experience much variation in temperature, though there is variation in rainfall pattern. How many seasons are experienced in your place? Four main seasons can be identified in India. The cold weather season, the hot weather season, the advancing monsoon and the retreating monsoon with some regional variations. The cold weather season, that is winter. The cold weather season begins from mid-November in northern India and stays till February. December and January are the coldest months in the northern part of India. The temperature decreases from south to the north. The average temperature of Chennai on the eastern coast is between 24 degree to 25 degree Celsius, while in the northern plains it ranges between 10 degree Celsius to 15 degree Celsius. Days are warm and nights are cold. Frost is common in the north and the higher slopes of the Himalayas experience snowfall. During this season, the northeast trade winds prevail over the country. 
they blow from land to sea and hence for most part of the country it is a dry season some amount of the rainfall occurs on the tamil nadu coast from these winds as here they blow from sea to land in the northern part of the country a feeble high pressure region develops with light winds moving outwards from this area influenced by the relief these winds blow through the ganga valley from the west and the northwest the weather is normally marked by clear sky low temperatures and low humidity and feeble variable winds a characteristic feature of the cold weather season over the northern plains is the inflow of cyclonic disturbances from the west and the northwest these low pressure systems originate over the mediterranean sea and western asia and move into india along with the westerly flow they cause the much needed winter rains over the plains and snowfall in the mountains although the total amount of winter rainfall locally known as mahavat is small they are of immense importance for the cultivation of rabi crops the peninsular region does not have a well defined cold season there is hardly any noticeable seasonal change in temperature pattern during winters due to the moderating influence of the sea the hot weather season summer due to the apparent northward movement of the sun the global heat belt shifts northward as such from march to may it is hot weather season in india page 32 figure 4.4 given here is the map of india showing the monsoon advancing to the indian subcontinent page 33 The influence of the shifting of the heat belt can be seen clearly from the temperature recordings taken during March to May in different latitudes. In March, the highest temperature is about 38 degrees Celsius recorded on the Deccan plateau. In April, temperatures in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh are around 42 degrees Celsius. In May, temperature of 45 degrees Celsius is common in the northwestern parts of the country. In peninsular India temperatures remain lower due to the moderating influence of the oceans the summer months experience rising temperature and falling air pressure in the northern parts of the country towards the end of may an elongated low pressure area develops in the region extending from the thar desert in the northwestern to patna in chotanagpur plateau in the east and southeast Circulation of air begins to set in around this trough. A striking feature of the hot weather season is the lu. These are strong, gusty, hot, dry winds blowing during the day over the north and northwestern India. Sometimes they even continue until late in the evening. Direct exposure to these winds may even prove to be fatal. Dust storms are very common during the month of May in the northern India. Dust storms are very common during the month of May in northern India. These storms bring temporary relief as they lower the temperature and may bring light rain and cool breeze. This is also the season of localized thunderstorms. associated with violent winds torrential downpours often accompanied by hail in west bengal these storms are known as kal besakhi towards the close of the summer season pre monsoon showers are common especially in kerala and karnataka they help in the early ripening of mangoes and are often referred to as mango showers advancing monsoon the rainy season by early june the low pressure condition over the northern plains intensifies it attracts the trade winds of the southern hemisphere these southeast trade winds originate over the warm subtropical areas of the southern oceans they cross the equator and blow in a southwesterly direction entering the indian peninsula as a southwest monsoon 
As these winds blow over warm oceans, they bring abundant moisture to the subcontinent. These winds are strong and blow at an average velocity of 30 km per hour. With the exception of the extreme northwest, the monsoon winds cover the country in about a month. The inflow of the southwest monsoon into India brings about a total change in the weather. Early in the season, the windward side of the western Ghats receives very heavy rainfall, more than 250 cm. The Deccan Plateau and parts of Madhya Pradesh also receives some amount of rain in spite of lying in the rain shadow area. The maximum rainfall of this season is received in the northeastern part of the country. Mosinram, in the southern ranges of the Khasi Hills, receives highest average rainfall in the world. Rainfall in the Ganga Valley decreases from the east to the west. Rajasthan and parts of Gujarat get scanty rainfall. Another phenomenon associated with the monsoon is its tendency to have breaks in rainfall. Thus, it has wet and dry spells. In other words, the monsoon rains take place only for a few days at a time. They are interspersed with rainless intervals. These breaks in monsoon are related to the movement of the monsoon trough. For various reasons, the trough and its axis keep on moving northward or southward, which determines the spatial distribution of rainfall. When the axis of the monsoon trough lies over the plains, rainfall is good in these parts. On the other hand, whenever the axis shifts closer to the Himalayas, there are longer dry spells in the plains and widespread rains occur in the mountainous catchment areas of the Himalayan rivers. These heavy rains bring in their wake, devastating floods, causing damage to life and property in the plains. The frequency and intensity of the tropical depressions too determine the amount and duration of monsoon rains. These depressions form at the head of the Bay of Bengal and cross over to the mainland. The depression follow the axis of the monsoon trough of low pressure. Page 34 Figure 4.5 A map of India is given and also it shows the retreating monsoon. Page 35 the monsoon is known for its uncertainties. The alternation of dry and wet spells vary in intensity, frequency and duration. While it causes heavy floods in one part, it may be responsible for droughts in the other. It is often irregular in its arrival and its retreat. Hence, it sometimes disturbs the farming schedule of millions of farmers all over the country. Retreating or post-monsoons, the transition season. During October to November, with the apparent movement of the sun towards the south, the monsoon trough or the low-pressure trough over the northern plains becomes weaker. This is gradually replaced by a high-pressure system. The southwest monsoon winds weaken and start withdrawing gradually. By the beginning of October, the monsoon withdraws from the northern plains. The month of October to November form a period of transition from hot rainy season to dry winter conditions. The retreat of the monsoon is marked by clear skies and rise in temperature. Do you know? Mosinra, the wettest place on the earth, is also reputed for its stalagmite and stalactite caves. While day temperatures are high, nights are cool and pleasant. The land is still moist owing to the conditions of high temperature and humidity. The weather becomes rather oppressive during the day. This is commonly known as October heat. In the second half of October, the mercury begins to fall rapidly in northern India. 
the low pressure conditions over northwestern india gets transferred to the bay of bengal by early november this shift is associated with the occurrence of cyclonic depressions which originate over the andaman sea these cyclones generally cross the eastern coast of india cause heavy and widespread rain these tropical cyclones are often very destructive the thickly populated deltas of the godavari the krishna and the kaveri are frequently struck by cyclones which cause great damage to life and property sometimes these cyclones arrive at the coast of odisha west bengal and bangladesh the bulk of the rainfall of the coromandel coast is derived from depressions and cyclones distribution of rainfall parts of western coast and northwestern india receive over about 400 cm of rainfall annually however it is less than 60 cm in western rajasthan and adjoining parts of gujarat haryana and punjab rainfall is equally low in the interior of the deccan plateau and east of the sahyadris why do these regions receive low rainfall A third area of low precipitation is around Leh in Jammu and Kashmir. The rest of the country receives moderate rainfall. Snowfall is restricted to the Himalayan region. Owing to the nature of monsoons, the annual rainfall is highly variable from year to year. Variability is high in the regions of low rainfall such as parts of Rajasthan, Gujarat and the leeward side of the Western Ghats. as such while areas of high rainfall are liable to be affected by floods areas of low rainfall are drought prone as shown in figure 4.6 and 4.7 monsoon as a unifying bond you have already known the way the himalayas protect the subcontinent from extremely cold winds from central asia This enables northern plains to have uniformly higher temperatures when compared to other areas on the same latitudes. Similarly, the peninsular plateau under the influence of the sea from three sides has moderate temperatures. Despite such moderating influences, there are great variations in the temperature conditions. Nevertheless, the unifying influence of the monsoon on the Indian subcontinent is quite perceptible. The seasonal alteration of the wind system and the associated weather conditions provide a rhythmic cycle of season. Even the uncertainties of rain and uneven distribution are very much typical of the monsoons. Page 36 Figure 4.6 The India map given here shows the seasonal rainfall which are recorded in the months of June to September There are various categories of the rainfall shown here above 400 cm of rainfall which is been recorded along with the western margins of India and a few patches of northeastern india that is in meghalaya the regions receiving 100 to 200 cm of rainfall are found in the central part of india dominating the states of uttar pradesh bihar chatisgarh parts of madhya pradesh and west bengal the low amount of rainfall ranging between 0 to 20 cm of rainfall are found in the states of rajasthan gujarat and the leeward side of the western ghats page 37 figure 4.7 given here is a map of india which shows the annual rainfall the annual rainfall is ranging between 0 to above 400 cm above 400 cm of rainfall are recorded along with the western margins and meghalaya 
the rainfall between 200 to 400 centimeters are recorded mostly in the northeastern states of our country. Rainfall between 100 to 200 are recorded in the patches which covers the states of West Bengal, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and parts of Uttar Pradesh. 0 to 40 centimeters of rainfall are found in the regions of Rajasthan which lies as the leeward side and the western margins of Aravli range. Also, a few regions of Vidharba and the eastern side of the western Ghats which lies as the leeward side for the western Ghats. Page 38 here, some news items are given. Caption 1 Devastated by Deluge Caption 2 Expect a ballistic winter after western winds are in. Caption 3 Hint of an early summer Caption 4 A day Mumbai won't forget Caption 5 Freezing Kashmir. These news items orient us with some information regarding the devastating effects of adverse climatic conditions. Let us do some exercise based on the collage which is given here. First, find out the names of the places and the seasons described. Second, Compare the rainfall description of Chennai and Mumbai and explain the reasons for the difference. 3. Evaluate flood as a disaster with the help of a case study. Page 39 The Indian landscape, its animal and plant life, its entire agricultural calendar and the life of the people, including their festivities, revolve around this phenomenon. Year after year, people of India from north to south and from east to west eagerly await the arrival of the monsoon. These monsoon winds bind the whole country by providing water to set the agricultural activities in motion. The river valleys which carry this water also unite as a single river valley unit. Exercise Question 1. Choose the correct answer from the four alternatives given below. 1 of 1. Which of the following places receives the highest rainfall in the world? A. Silcher B. Mosinram C. Cherapunji or D. Guwahati 2 of 1. The wind blowing in the northern plains in summers is known as a. Kalbesaki B. Lu C. Trade winds D. None of the above 3 of 1 Which one of the following causes rainfall during winters in northwestern part of India? A. Cyclonic depression B. Retreating monsoon C. Western disturbances or D. Southwest monsoon 4 of 1 Monsoon arrives in India approximately in A. Early May B. Early July C. Early June Or is it D. Early August 5 of 1 Which of the following characterizes the cold weather season in India? A. Warm days and warm nights B. Warm days and cold nights C. Cold days and cold nights Or D. Cold days and warm nights. Question 2. Answer the following questions briefly. 1 of 2. What are the controls affecting the climate of India? 2 of 2. Why does India have a monsoon type of climate? 3 of 2. Which part of India does experience the highest diurnal range of temperature and why? 4 of 2. Which winds account for rainfall along the Malabar coast? 5 of 2. 
What are jet streams and how do they affect the climate of India? 6 of 2. Define monsoons. What do you understand by break in monsoon? 7 of 2. Why is the monsoon considered a unifying bond? Question 3. Why does the rainfall decreases from the east to the west in northern India? Question 4. Give reasons as to why 1 of 4. Seasonal reversal of wind direction takes place over the Indian subcontinent. Why? 2 of 4. The bulk of rainfall in India is concentrated over a few months. Why is it so? 3 of 4. The Tamil Nadu coast receives winter rainfall. Why? 4 of 4. The delta region of the eastern coast is frequently struck by cyclones. What are the main reasons? Why does it happen? 5 of 4. Parts of Rajasthan, Gujarat and the leeward side of the western Ghats are drought prone. Why? Page 40 Question 5 Describe the regional variations in the climatic conditions of India with the help of suitable examples. Question 6 Discuss the mechanism of monsoons. Question 7 Give an account of weather conditions and characteristics of the cold season. Question 8 Give the characteristics and effects of the monsoon rainfall in India. Map skills On an outline map of India, show the following. First, areas receiving rainfall over 400 cm. Second, areas receiving less than 20 cm of rainfall. Third, the direction of the southwest monsoon over India. Project activity. First, find out which songs, dances, festivals and special food preparations are associated with certain seasons in your region. Do they have some commonality with other regions of India? Second, collect photographs of typical rural houses and clothing of people from different regions of India. Examine whether they reflect any relationship with the climatic condition and relief of the area. For doing it yourself. Table 1, given on page number 41, shows the average mean monthly temperatures and amounts of rainfall of 10 representative stations. Some of the stations I read out for you, they are Bengaluru, Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi, Jodhpur, Chennai, Nagpur, Shillong, Tiruvanthapuram and Leh. It is for you to study on your own and convert them into temperature and rainfall graphs. A glance at these visual representations will help you to grasp instantly the similarities and differences between them. One such graph, figure 1, is already prepared for you. Here is a graph prepared for you depicting the temperature and the rainfall with the help of a bar diagram and a line graph for Delhi. See if you can arrive at some broad generalizations about our diverse climatic conditions. We hope you are in for a great joy of learning. Do the following activities. The second activity. Rearrange the 10 stations in two different sequences. First, according to their distances from the equator. Second, according to their altitude above mean sea level. The third activity. One of three. Name two rainiest stations. Two of three. Name two driest stations. Three of three. 
two stations with most equable climate. Four of three, two stations with most extreme climate. Five, five of three, two stations most influenced by the Arabian branch of southwest monsoons. Six of three, two stations most influenced by the Bay of Bengal branch of southwest monsoons. Seven of three, two stations influenced by both branches of the southwest monsoons. Eight of three. Two stations influenced by retreating and northeast monsoons. Nine of three. Two stations receiving winter showers from the western disturbances. Ten of three. The two hottest stations in the months of A. February, B. April, C. May, and D. June. Page 41 The fourth activity. Now find out. One of four. Why are Theravantapuram and Shillong rainier in June than in July? Two of four. Why is July rainier in Mumbai than in Theravantapuram? Three of four. Why are southwest monsoons less rainy in Chennai? 4 of 4. Why is Shillong rainier than Kolkata? 5 of 4. Why is Kolkata rainier in July than in June, unlike Shillong, which is rainier in June than in July? 6 of 4. Why does Delhi receive more rainfall than Jodhpur? Activity 5. Now think why. First, Theravantapuram has equable climate. B. Chennai has more rains only after fury of monsoon is over in most parts of the country. C. Jodhpur has a hot desert type of climate. D. Leh has moderate precipitation almost throughout the year. E. While in Delhi and Jodhpur, most of the rain is confined to nearly three months. In Tiruvanthapuram and Shillong, it is almost nine months of the year. In spite of these facts, see carefully if there are strong evidences to conclude that monsoons still provide a very strong framework lending overall climatic unity to the whole country. You were just listening to Chapter 4, Climate, that contained 16 pages. This chapter was read by Sheba. Thank you.